Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are checking out the Azure Polyfuga. I hope I say that right. Now this aircraft beyond the fact that it just looks absolutely just goofy and yet really cool at the same time. I'm not quite sure how, what to feel right now. Um, it is a French developed aircraft by a French developer uh, for the simulator as well. And today we're going to see what it is all about. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so first off, guys, this aircraft can be found on the Sim Market link. Will be down in the description below. You can see the price up there in the uh, top left. The aircraft again looks very, very cool. They give you a very nice description about the aircraft itself. I'll leave this paused up on the screen so you guys can check it out, as well as make sure you take a look at the features available. Now, I have done a quick test in the cockpit in VR to see what the kind of performance was like, and it's very similar to that of like a Cessna 172. Um, so, no real major performance changes based on uh, which method of visualization you want to take a look at anything beyond anything different of what you're already experiencing when switching from the monitor view to the VR view um, so anyway just want you guys to be sure that you have the information right up front of where to find it link again down in the description below let's get back into the aircraft Okay, now, as always, guys, I do want to make it very, very clear that although this aircraft was very graciously given to me for a review of the aircraft, all of the opinions that you're about to receive are my own, both good and the bad. Uh, so just wanted to make sure to put that disclaimer out right away. Starting out with the exterior textures, guys, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Totally meeting with the Microsoft Flight Simulator expectations. The PBRs looks like the re reflection materials look absolutely fantastic. All of the dimensions and joining surfaces are right on par. It was obviously uh, very very well done and a lot of time was taken to uh, pay attention to the details and make sure that uh, there weren't any gaps or goofy uh, behavior with any of the surfaces of the aircraft the canopies look absolutely amazing I love the reflection that was done on them uh, it's one of the better glass canopies I think that I've seen um, you know not to say that any of the others were terrible but this is definitely one that comes up on on uh, one of the top one of the top few here um, one of the biggest things that I always mention is the tires. Tires always tend to be one of those things that gets really neglected. Now, these are definitely better than, better, uh, goodness gracious, better than a lot of the ones that I have seen in the past. So I'm always a little concerned about, you know, them looking a little bit on the plastic side, as I was saying. Now, with these, these are definitely far better than many of the previous tires that I have seen before. Now, you wouldn't think that's such a big deal, but honestly, I find it to be more... Um, uh, of an eyesore than you think when the wheels don't match up with the rest of the textures of the aircraft. I mean, you absolutely do see it. Um, and I think these ones are very, very well done in comparison. I don't really see any faults or any eyesores on the exterior of the aircraft. I think it all looks pretty on par. Um, aside from, like I said, man, this is a goofy looking plane. Uh, given the fact that it's a VTAIL, I'm expecting the performance to be, uh, I'm willing to bet this thing's sort of like a, a, a roller coaster without the track, but I guess we'll find out once we get up and, and moving. Let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit here. All right, stepping into the seat again, the textures and the attention to detail very clearly um, followed the exterior. Um, I will absolutely say when it comes to the interior textures, this is definitely uh, still matching up as one of the best that I have seen. The shading looks absolutely great. The depth looks great. The legibility of the gauges is right on par. Um, even right down to the text. The text is all legible, although in a language I don't understand, but you know, that's not their fault. That's my fault. <laughs> and I definitely can't blame them for that as, as picky as I'd like to be. Um, but it looks wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. But look at that seat, man. It looks painful. You realize what that would do to your thighs? Oh, Gosh, I can feel the pain already. Um, but aside from that, uh, the artwork is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful artwork. Um, I, I really don't have a whole lot more to say into that. Now, some things that I will point out that I do have a concern with is in the installation directory, it, it does have a self-installer that installs directly into the community folder. Um, inside the installation directory, I could not find any 
uh, detailed documentation on how to properly start the aircraft. Now, there is an interactive checklist of sorts, but the problem is, for example, if we go to starting the engine, and let's say you just want the master battery switch, we click that, it brings the camera down, but there's no indication of where the master battery switch is. Now, you could probably turn your tooltips on, and, and that would probably resolve the issue. But then you're still going to have to mouse over each switch one by one to determine what's what. And the problem with that is, unless you speak French, which I do not, uh, I did horrible. I mean, well, all right, so that one might be a bad example. That's pretty easy to decipher there. <laughs> but you guys get the gist of what I'm getting at, hopefully. Um, that without that, it would be a little difficult to ascertain what switch it's actually saying to you i mean as i said the camera view put us to about here right so it could be anything in this window that could be a battery if it wasn't quite that easy to see uh for example if we were to go to the starter like there you go like i have no idea which one of these is the starter so i will say the checklist either i don't now this aircraft was released back in february i believe um so i don't know if this is something that was broken with the previous update that's always possible so you know that's something that hopefully the uh, developer will adjust or if it was never there i think the interactive flashing of the specific control needs to be something that's definitely added either that or the final option is a detailed checklist uh, like a pdf document or something like that that puts it into English and again I am I always feel really weird saying that okay because I have full respect for each nation or nationality and their own language totally want you know you guys hopefully understand where I'm getting at, that I'm not trying to be insulting to anybody I always feel weird making and bringing up things like this but you know when you have a consumer base that's worldwide and the English language is something that's definitely brought out uh, worldwide for the most part um, you, you got to have some way for people to know what they're looking at and, and I think any of those options w would be a wonderful thing like again if you were going to have the battery switch you know if you keep it in the French language native language absolutely but then have that battery switch or whatever light up so you know what to hit I think that's my only concern I know I rambled there for a bit, but again, I always get a little eh, scared of offending someone uh, when I say something in regard, you know, to nationality or language, something like that, because I'm not trying to sound like that at all. Um, uh, there we go. Okay, cool. All right. So with that being said, what we're going to be doing today is just an auto start, because I will tell you that I have briefly flown the aircraft. I uh, just sort of toured around for a second, get an idea of what it's like. And uh, it's pretty freaking awesome. This thing's cool. Um, now, uh, it's also got this really neat flight pad. So let's see here. You have obviously all of your outside equipment and things like that. You can close the canopy doors directly from the pad here. Um, yep, there they go. Coming on down. Uh, refill your oxygen level if necessary. It even shows the valve is off currently. Uh, trigger failure. Haven't quite figured. Oh, trigger a failure. I got it. So you can trigger a hydraulic failure if you want. Your different smoke colors, engine smoke if you choose. Um, let's turn engine smoke on. I want to see what that does. Well, maybe we'll do that later. Let's do that later. Um, you have your comm frequencies that can all be adjusted here or at least tuned. Um, a map. I do like the GPS map. The map is pretty nice. I actually like this a lot. Um, again, one of the better ones that I've seen, I like the ability to, uh, really dive in deep and, and then have a really nice picture of where we are. So that's pretty awesome. I do like that a lot. And then finally a weapons armament page. Um, you can actually, uh, power on the weapons. I don't know if the weapons can actually be released. Um, again, I couldn't find anything that would support any documentation telling me that they could. And I'd also didn't particularly look that difficult, you know, when it comes to the weapons releasing, you know, like for example, I remember when the uh, Corsair first got, you know, it's machine guns, you know, yeah, it was cool. But for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's something that, like, I used it in that video and then never touched it again. I just like to fly when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator. When I want combat, I go to DCS. I go to the source. Okay, so with that in mind, I think we are ready for engine start and let's go flying. All right. Head trackers on. Control E. and stuff.
Engine 2 RPMs. I think we're going to use green smoke today. The green arrow. Just kidding. Don't copyright me. Alright. I think we are stable. Sounds like everything else has calmed down. Down calmed. Comed, downed. All right, let's go to our controls. The parking brake is released. Let's add some taxi stuff. Not sure how much power. I can't remember how much it took to get her moving. Brakes aren't on, are they? Okay. There we go. There's some taxi. Got some taxi edge happening. I suppose I should check the wind here. Do do do. One niner. Three for 14 knots. So we shall depart from runway 11 left, which is very nice for us. Do 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 do. Clear day today, but a windy day today. Oh, why did I think there was a line that connected that to the taxiway? Well, now I just look like a fool, don't I? Oops. It's only my hometown that I've flown out of 219 times. Why would I forget that, right? Sounds are good. Turn them landing lights on. This is where the flight echo comes in really handy. All right, landing lights are on. Hey, you can sort of see it there in the nose. Oh, forgot you can't do that. I was flying DCS recently, and it's really a pain in the butt when you're going from the exterior views back and forth from one sim to the other. Because in DCS, you can do everything you want from the external while manipulating the camera. This one, you got to do one or the other. All right, so we got flaps one set. This is a cool-looking airplane. All right, here we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, from the right, you have the Fuga from Azure Poly. That is not staying on track. All right, max power. Come on, baby, stay with me. We're not center line, but I'm at least trying to stay in my lane. There's a hundred knots. Fifty rotating. Whoa, baby. I knew it. I knew it was going to be touchy. All right, letting off. Gear coming up. Pass through 200. Flaps coming up. Oh, she is touchy, sir. Very touchy. And we got smoke. We got smoke. I got green smoke. Name the movie. Green smoke. I got green smoke. Abort, abort, abort. Green smoke. Name the movie. All right. So let's turn our green smoke off for now and just fly it. All right, so that's hands-free right there. Obviously, so I had to reach for the mouse. The mouse. All right, let's see how the trim is responding. Trimming nose up, trimming nose up. Man, yeah. Ooh. 
takes a bit to trim it, that's for sure. It is touchy. And you can definitely, definitely feel a performance difference with that. Oops. Aye. Why are you doing this to me? I'm just trying to back the camera up. Thank you. You can definitely feel a performance difference with that V-tail. It is odd. There we go. It, I think that's good. It feels better. Oh, yeah. So that's just rolling without any aileron or without any rudder. So an uncoordinated turn here. Here we go again. Let's watch what the nose does. I mean, just yoink. <laughs> and you can sort of feel it slipping and sliding in the air. If you watch the movements of the aircraft in relationship to the bank angle, it is touchy. Touchy, touchy, touchy. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Oof. That's a goofy little plane, man. All right, I also want to check, is that really a not NOE? I would assume so. Huh. All right, climbing up here, getting some, getting some altitude. What do you say we set up? for some air show stuff, right? Let's just see if, if it's if it's cool to watch from the ground, shall we? Okay. Alright, so there we got to have a little bit of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm sure you could tell just by the video, I was a little nervous flying it. So now let's try the golden trick here. See if we can land it. Let her slow down a bit. I'm going to go a little long in the pattern here, since I don't know the aircraft very well. Helps if I'm even flying somewhat perpendicular. Flaps one coming in. Gear coming down. Shake some altitude off here. Flaps two stepping down.
There we go. On glide slope. Final flaps in. A little high. Back on slope. Come on, baby. Gosh. That V-tail definitely makes a difference. Very, very odd behavior once those main wheels touch. Yeah, you lose, like, all authority. All authority. Let's get off the runway here, and uh, then we'll watch the replay of the landing there. Let's get those flaps up. Low wing like this, I don't want to leave them up or leave them down. All right, so that was a very, very interesting flight. That was the first full flight, quote unquote, that I've done in this aircraft yet. I will say landing, uh, you definitely got to make sure to get that nose wheel down early. I also think I came in probably a little hot based on the performance and the way the aircraft handled right about the time that I killed the throttle. It took quite a bit for it to actually settle in. Uh, but once it settled in, it settled in very nicely. It's just I didn't have any authority from that, uh, from that V-tail. Uh, to actually steer the aircraft down on the deck until the nose wheel came down. So um, aerodynamic braking, I think, is something that probably shouldn't happen with this particular aircraft, but I could be mistaken. Um, over all in all, guys, this is a fantastic aircraft. It was a ton of fun to fly. It's very, very tricky. Uh, you're definitely going to have to pay attention to what you're doing with it with that V-tail, and I think it was modeled very, very nicely because I know that V-tails can be quite tricky to fly. Uh, they have some very odd behaviors and some weird flight dynamics, but they can also make the aircraft uh, very, very high-performing. Um, on turns, it, it, it definitely bleeds very, very quick. Um, I noticed that uh, in attempt, quote unquote, attempt to do a uh, knife edge when we're doing the air show portion, um, that nose just wanted to drop quickly. I felt like the aircraft wanted to roll over onto its back very quickly. Um, so definitely some interesting behavior in regards to the V-tail. Um, now, with that being said, I think that speaks very, very highly to the developers and the flight model, flight model they included with this aircraft. Having never flown, obviously, an aircraft like this myself, what I mean when I speak to the flight model is, does it feel like the aircraft is on rails? That's what I'm always looking for. You know, it, does the aircraft feel very basic? Does it feel very black and white? Left is left, right is right, without any real piloting or correction necessary in order to maintain flight. Um, you know, the more difficult it is, the quote unquote better I think the flight model is, or at least was implemented, you know. The, we, we fly these simulators to fly the aircraft, and, and any time that we're put in a position where the flight model isn't difficult enough or doesn't react to the environment, it doesn't react to the windage, it doesn't react to turbulence, it doesn't react to, you know, adverse maneuvering of the aircraft that wouldn't normally take place, you know, these are all the things that I look for when I make those kind of statements. Um, and I think this one was done very, very well. Uh, the aircraft is definitely one that you can't let go of. You definitely have to pay attention to what you're doing with the aircraft. If you get lazy with it, it's going to let you know, and it'll probably put you in the dirt. Um, and I really enjoy that about these kind of aircraft. Um, like I said earlier, I think it probably shows in those air show maneuvers, if you will, which were about as basic as basic can get. 
Um, anytime I tried to get advanced or, or showboat with it, um, I really got nervous. I thought I was going to lose it more than once. Um, like I said, down low like that, when I, in that first maneuver where I, where I did the barrel roll, I, I thought I was going to hit the ground. I thought that was going to be it. I was very surprised that I came out of that. And honestly, I didn't think I had, um, I thought I had lost more altitude than the recording showed me. Um, so that was sort of a relief, if anything. But uh, it is a very, very fun aircraft and absolutely worth it, the dollar amount that's being asked for, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think uh, down in the description below, especially if you have this aircraft. If you end up picking it up because of this video, tell me what you end up thinking about it, guys. I always like to hear from you all. As always, stay safe and healthy, folks, and I will see you in the next one.